How's it going, guys? Difficult question for biostats. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Found me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, and the man underscore medical links down below. for me a telegram list, a telegram group channel down below. Let's start the clip. So we've got this biostats question. If you've done our biostats course, it's not hard, but when I write hard, it means for most of you, you guys struggle. You don't understand any of this stuff. So what I'm going to do, make this very clean and easy. Okay? So we've got a p-value of 0.03. Alpha 0.05, power of 80%. And what conclusion can we draw? Now, this alpha of 0.05, that's our cutoff at which we declare significance. Now, most of you guys already know that. For most studies, we tend to use 0.05, where a p value equal to or less than that, we say, yes, there's significance, okay? And if it's over that, we don't have significance. So it's called alpha. You may not have known that, but that's what it refers to as nothing to get scared, okay? And so power of 80%, fine. Now let's just hop through. There's a 3%. What's, what can we draw a conclusion with? There's a 3% chance these results would occur by chance if the alternative hypothesis is true. Wrong answer. Now the p-value, we talk about null hypothesis. That means there's no difference between drug X and placebo. So far, so good. Is, is that already too confusing for some of you? Okay, when we say null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis means... Yes, there is a difference between drug X and placebo. So when we talk about the p-value, we talk about it in terms of the null hypothesis being true, always. So any type of statement, even if you have no idea what's going on, any type of statement where we're talking about the alternative hypothesis being true doesn't make sense in terms of p-value. This would be correct if we said there's a 3% chance these results could occur by chance if the null hypothesis is true. If we repeat the study many times over, what we did here, if there really is no difference between drug X and placebo, we would expect to see results at least as suggestive as ours in favor of the alternative hypothesis, in favor of there being a difference between drug X and placebo. We would expect results at least as supportive as ours in favor of that to occur 3% of the time completely by chance, if there really is no difference. I know for some of you that sounds really hard, okay? It's a mouthful, but that's what a p-value means. It doesn't refer to this isolated study. P-values refer to if we replicated this study many times over. That's how you have to word it in terms of these probabilities, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Trace B, there's a 97% chance the null hypothesis is false. Wrong answer. So this is another thing you guys should know. It doesn't matter what the p-value is, 0 0.01, 0 0.04, 0 0.20. doesn't matter what the p-value is. It's never going to tell us the probability slash chance that the null versus alternative hypotheses are true or false. It doesn't tell us that. Okay, so for instance, if we have a p-value of 0 0.04 where we declare significance, we reject the null hypothesis, versus if we have a p-value of 0 0.0001, we're like, holy shit. That's like, and we reject null hypothesis. That's really significant. It does not mean that the null hypothesis is more likely to be false. Similarly, it does not mean the alternative hypothesis is more likely to be true. That's a false interpretation. It's a misinterpretation. When you, when you look at a study in a journal online somewhere, you see these really low p-values, it's wrong in your mind to say, oh, that must be definitely true or more likely to be true. It's not right. What it means is if they repeated this same study many times over and there really is no difference, it's the probability that you'd get those results by chance. That, that's what it means. As I already said, it's the probability that you get results at least as suggestive as, as those in favor of the alternative hypothesis to occur completely by chance if the null hypothesis is true. I know it's difficult, but wrong fucking answer. Choice C, there's a 3% chance a type 1 error occurred is wrong. It's a false positive error. So this is where alpha comes into play. The way you interpret alpha is it doesn't matter what the p-value turns out to be. For this study, there's a maximum false positive type 1 error rate of 5%. That's what alpha means. Okay? So when you have a p-value of, of 0 0.03 or 0 0.01, doesn't mean that there's a 3% or 1% chance we fucked up. It doesn't mean 3%, 1% chance type 1 error. It doesn't mean any of that. 
the only way you're going to interpret these false positive errors for U.S. similarity is first you have to say the null hypothesis is true. You can only have a false positive if the null hypothesis is true, right? You're saying that there's a difference when there really isn't. That's a false positive error, isn't it? So the null hypothesis must be true, but the p-value doesn't matter in terms of your interpretation of it. You just say, oh, well, you just use the standard cutoff of 0 0.05 like most studies do. Oh, okay, so whatever our p-value is, significant or not significant, we know that there's a, a false positive rate of 5% with this type of study. Choices C and D, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, actually, I'll just give an extra layer of clarification. The reason D is wrong is because, notice with, my, notice with my wording, I said there's a maximum chance of 5%. That's what these probabilities call for. It's a maximum 5% chance. It's not exactly a 5% chance. And the other thing is, it's not with our singular study here. Okay? It's over many studies. So we'd say we, if we repeat this study many times over, there's a maximum 5% false positive rate with this study many times over. Not with an isolated study and it's not exactly 5%. It's difficult, right? Wrong fucking answer, as I already said. Choice C, correct answer, is a 20% chance. A type 2, a false negative error, may occur over many repeated studies. So power is simply, and this is going to make, this can be value for some of you. Power equals your true positive detection rate. It's a very easy way to remember it. So if you have a true positive detection rate, you must assume that the alternative hypothesis is true. The same way a p-value, only the interpretation when we talk about it, it assumes the null hypothesis is true. Power assumes the alternative hypothesis is true. So what we're saying is, if there really is a difference between drug X and placebo, we expect to accurately declare significance 80% of the time over many repeated studies. It's also the same thing as saying that if we repeat this study many times over and the alternative hypothesis really is true, there really is a difference, we expect to get a false negative error 20% of the time. It's a difficult concept. You say, why do we shoot for a power of 80? Why not shoot for a power of 90, for instance? Well. What's the major way that we can increase power? That's high yield free assimilate. It's by increasing sample size, isn't it? isn't it? It's not practical and it's often expensive. So rather than having, let's say, 600 people in your study, maybe in order to achieve a power of 90, you need 50,000 people in your study and it's not practical. So power is often, it's a balance here in terms of this is generally considered acceptable the same way 0 0.05 or alpha is generally considered acceptable. Correct answer. 